This was the scene earlier this evening in Barcelona as Nelson Diebel, the Princeton student, native of New Jersey, became the first American in the 1992 Olympics to win a gold medal, first to the wall in the 100-meter breaststroke, and in the process, he beats Hungary's Norbert Rosa, who was the world record holder, is still the world record holder for that matter. Rosa settling for the silver. Here's the reaction from Nelson Diebel. He'll thrust his fist into the air. Yes, his time is best, and the gold medal is his. And there is that gold medal around the neck of Nelson Diebel, who joins us now in the studio. Has it uh, sunk in for you yet? Uh, not quite. <laughs> It hasn't, it hasn't really settled in yet. Uh, I'm still sort of running on adrenaline. What do you suspect you'll do in the next few days with that medal? Who would you entrust it to? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I think I'll probably lock it up somewhere. Tell me about the race itself. Most of the people who I spoke to who know a good deal about swimming said you were a medal contender, but they wouldn't have put you among the favorites. How did you feel coming in? Um, well, I think that, that mental preparation is just as important as as the physical preparation, as the training, and uh, and I went in with the attitude that I could win and I would win, and I kept that attitude throughout the uh, throughout the race, and I think that's what got me to the wall first. Let's talk about your background, and I bring this up because you've acknowledged it yourself. You're 21 years old now. For mm -hmm. a good stretch, five or six years in your teens, involved with drugs, involved with alcohol, kicked out of a couple of high schools, rocky road, right? Yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, it wasn't exactly a picture. Uh, I wasn't exactly the picture of uh, an American child. What straightened you out, if that's the way to put it? Um, uh, swimming had a great deal to do with it. It taught me a lot of discipline. Um, and uh, Chris Martin, my, my coach, my club coach, um, who's also one of the Olympic coaches here, um, was, was pretty much instrumental in, in turning me around. Him and, and a roommate of mine at Petty, another swimmer named uh, Chuck Batchelor. Uh, between the two of them, they got me to uh, kind of reevaluate the way I was living my life and realize that there was a better way and there could be a better way. And if I did it their way, I would be a success. You described yourself as a, a rebel without a clue, <laughs> just a body sitting around taking up space, not the kind of guy you'd like to bring home to your mother. No. How much, if any, of that remains true? Um, I, th I think that uh, you could bring me home to some others. Um, I, I, I still am a little bit off the mainstream, but I think that as, uh, as I'm, I'm going through life, I'm realizing that uh, y you can't rebel against everything all the time. And uh, I think I'm becoming a little bit more mainstream. I don't think I'll ever totally be your, your average American boy, but, um, but I think that, that I'm coming around a bit. I am told, although I have no firsthand knowledge of this, I am told that you have a tattoo of the Olympic rings on your hip. Have yeah. I been rightly informed? Yes, yes. Yeah. What, what prompted this? I mean, the team. <laughs> I mean, uh, basically, uh, I mean, I got, I got the earrings. Can't really do anything else with those. Each of these I got for a certain reason. My coach forbid me to get the first one. Uh, said I had to make the honor roll. I made the honor roll. He let me keep the first one. Wanted to get the second one. He said, well, you have to win nationals. I won nationals. Got the second one. Wanted to get the third one. He said, you have to win the 100 and the 200 brushstroke nationals. And I did that in 1990 and got the third one. And the fourth one would just sort of you know, get old, so I had to do something else. And I decided that me, me and my roommate, Roy Sharp, who uh, will be in the 200 backstroke on the 28th, um, the two of us said that if we made the team, we'd get, we'd get the rings tattooed. Now that you've won a gold medal, yeah. would you have a gold medal tattooed on the other hip or oh, no, anywhere maybe, else where there's a space? Maybe on the shoulder blade, you know? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Um, I haven't really decided. You were quoted as saying, I don't sing the national anthem. Maybe I mumble the Pledge of Allegiance, but like I said before, you say, I'm not the guy you would want to bring home to meet your mother. Do you know what it looked like on the medal stand? Uh, let, me, let me show it to you. Okay. Take a look. Here's a guy who says he doesn't sing the anthem. Maybe it doesn't mean that much to him.
It was pretty moving for you, wasn't it? Oh yeah, I, I kind of knew it would be. Um, the quote was kind of taken out of out of context. Uh, I never meant to be. A um, quote taken out of context. Oh no, that never happened. Nah, to the media. nah, that 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 couldn't possibly <laughs> happen uh, anywhere in the in the media. Couldn't right. possibly happen. <laughs> Um, no, it was, it was, it was the question that it was directed towards was a question on what I can do to help the team or what, what I will do for the team. And, and, uh, I said that I'm not going to help the team by singing the national anthem. Um, I'm going to help the team by swimming as fast as I can and getting a gold medal. And that's what I was going to do for, for this swimming team. And, uh, that's what I did. On Friday, you swim in the medley relay, so I guess there's yes. some time to unwind and enjoy this in the meantime, huh? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Uh, it's going to take some unwinding, that's for sure. Nelson Diebel, congratulations. Thank you very much. Good to much. see you. First gold medal winner for the United States in these Olympic Games. Final thoughts on this first day and night of Olympic competition for the Games of the 25th Olympiad when we come back right after this.